Well, I'm Cathy Ross. I'm Honorary Research Fellow at the Museum of London. I've been part of the steering group, so I was on the workshops in Barcelona and London. I couldn't come to the Cologne one, which I was very sorry to miss, uh, but the Bar Barcelona and London ones were fantastic and I found it really valuable. Well, I think cities are about people, which is a truism that, that, we, that we all know. And of course, people are about the senses and, you know, as we constantly say in the workshops, how you experience the city is, is a very sort of sensory thing. But I think it's particularly important, and where these workshops have been so useful, um, not to sort of take the senses for granted. I think that's the real problem that you, you know, certainly in museums, when you think you want to understand something, you begin by you know, going back to history and understanding it in a sort of intellectual way. But to actually understand the, the feel, the look, the character of a city, you've got to take account of the sensory experience of actually experiencing, you know, the streets, the buildings, the other people around you, the smells, the sights, all of those things. So, um, as I say, it's something you can take for granted much too easily. So it's very important to focus on them now and again and remind yourselves that the senses are important. I think for me the most interesting insight was how much I personally was actually editing out um, because on some of the exercises, I particularly think of the one in the Whitechapel Road where you had to stand and just think of what you can smell, what you can hear and it, you realise what a rich layered experience this is and the smells are, you know, must be about 20 different smells once you actually focus on them and of course in day to day you just tend to sort of you know, you, 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 you know, it's a characteristic of being in a city, you sort of edit things out. And once you've walked down that street twice, you then almost sometimes can walk down the street without even seeing it, let alone sort of smelling. So I think just stopping and, and realising how very multi-layered and how complex uh, the sensory experience of the city is, has been very valuable. And the other thing I, I found particularly valuable is actually linking that complexity to more academic thinking about you know analyzing things like power relationships which again we talked about a lot that some smells you know c trigger off things that 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 are that are sort of intellectual understandings that this smell belongs to this group of people and this smell belongs to another group of people so having that sort of link between experiencing and realizing what a deep experience it is and then linking it to a more sort of um reserved sort of less personal sort of analysis of what that means I think has been really useful. I think for me it's, it's thinking about the senses if you like as part of the subject of, of the curation as opposed to part of the interpretation which um, I think in museums we've done a lot of um, interpreting things in museum displays through the senses for special groups like for sort of visually impaired or for children, you think, oh, let's have a touchy, feely thing, let's have an audio thing, and this will help, you know, these specific groups. So it's almost like a method of interpreting a subject. But um, the change for me is then is thinking about the senses themselves as the subject. And it's not that museums haven't done that in the past, but I think they've tended not to. You know, the senses have been used as a, as a vehicle for saying other things rather than as focusing on the senses and sensory experience in its own right.